All right, guys, in this series, we will see how to create a Node.js CRUD application that stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. So we'll be using Node.js along with MySQL as our database. So first thing first, let us install Node.js. So if we move on to our browser and type Node.js, here we have to click on the download link to download. Based on your system architecture, you can download it either for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Since I'm using a Windows, I'll download it for Windows. And once the download is done, we'll also need XAMPP. So you can go to your browser and search XAMPP. And we'll just have to download XAMPP. Again, based on the architecture, so I'm using a 64 bit. So I'll be using 64 bit one. Once it's downloaded, you can install it on your system. Since I have both installed, I'll skip this step and move the process where we create a Node.js application. Once we have completed the step of installing Node.js and XAMPP, we can start building our test application. For that, we will open our folder. And over here, I will create a new folder for the test. So you can create a new folder by pressing Ctrl, Shift, and N. And we will give it a name. So in this folder, we will have to initialize Node.js. So for that, we can go to the URL or the location and type CMD to open command prompt from this location. So once we are in the location where our file exists, we can type NP npm install hyphen G. So as you can see, the packages are being downloaded. And once it's done, we will be able to use our application. So you can see that two packages have been added. If at all you get an error over here, I would suggest to check if your node is installed properly or not. So you can do it by just typing node hyphen v enter. If you get the version over here, it means that Node.js has successfully installed on your system and you can retry running this command. So once we have installed node, we will initialize it by doing by doing npm init hyphen y. So npm init initializes our repository and creates two files that is package.json. You can see over here that a package file is being created and hyphen y is set to say yes to all. If you don't set hyphen y, it will ask you for the name, the description, and other few details. Since I set it to yes for all, it just created a default one. So once we are done with it, we will open this folder in our VS Code. So you can open VS Code straight away from command prompt by hitting code space dot. The dot stands for the location from where you want to open VS Code. So it's from this current directory and enter. And we can see that we are in the current directory with the package.json over here. So once we are done with it, we will create a new file and we will call it app.js. So this file is going to be our main server and we are going to run every server application from this file itself. Before we begin with it, we'll have to install certain libraries. So we will be using express. So you can hit control and tilde or you can go to the terminal and open a new terminal. And in this terminal, we'll have to install certain libraries. So we can do it by npm i or npm install followed by the library that you want. So we will be using express for the same. So express, this is our server running engine. And it's begin downloading. Once the download is done, you can see that a node modules folder is being created as well as a package.json file is being created. So to confirm if it has been installed properly or not, you can open the package.json, scroll down, and in our dependencies, we can see the express is installed along with the version of express. So once we are done with it, we will create a basic application to check if express is running properly or not. So we can do that by closing a terminal and going to app.js file. So we'll have to initialize our express as an app so we can do it by const followed by express, which is a variable name. 
and we will connect it with the package that we have downloaded so we can do require express we will also have to create an application with express so we can do const app So this will be our application where we tell it to run on express so you can do express so once our app is ready we will just create a test situation where the app listens so we can do it by app dot listen so this listen takes two parameters that is a function and a callback so the callback will be on which route do we want to hear it on so it can be root or route based on your pronunciation. So it's either root or route. And in this, we will give it 3000 because I wanted to listen on 3000 port. And followed by a function. So this will be an anonymous function. So in short, an anonymous function in JavaScript stands for a function without a function name. The function is declared and called in the same line itself. So in the anonymous function, we will give it a console log, console dot log, and in the console log, we will tell server is up and running, and we will close this line. So we can run our application by going to our terminal. So to run our application, we will be using NodeMon. So NodeMon is a library that keeps track of the changes that happens on app.js and restarts the server once the changes have been done. So firstly, we will install NodeMon. So npm i NodeMon. Let's wait. And once it's been installed, we can run our server by doing NodeMon and our application name that is app.js. We can see a message that server is up and running. That means our server is ready. So we can host our first page. So we will create a first route where we will display a message. So that can be done by setting app.get. We will have to give it an route name. So we will give it forward slash. That's all. And then we will give it another function. This is also going to be an anonymous function. In our Node.js application, we will be using anonymous function as it is easy to create and access. In this function, we will have two parameters that is request and response. So in our function, we can set response.send. This will send a message to our front end when we hit the route. So in send, we can send the message that we want. So we will send a message of server is running. Once we are done with it, we will save. Go to our terminal and run NodeMon. And a file name that is app.js. So once the server is up and running, we can hit Windows R or open our browser and go to the route where it says localhost 3000 since 3000 is the port on which we are listening. So once we run this, we can see that there's a message that server is running. If at all we make changes to the send message where server is running on Node.js, save it. We can see that the server has been restarted automatically by NodeMon. And if we go to our local host and refresh it, we can see that the message has been replaced. In the next chapter, we will see how to create a complete CRUD application.